week, computer science video number 33, looking at subprograms and, in particular, procedures. So, subprograms, these are also known as subroutines, and we'll refrain, refer to them mainly throughout this video as subroutines. They're also sometimes known, possibly incorrectly or inaccurately, as modules. They are linked to modules, but we'll find out later um, what exactly is a module. Um, so a subroutine is a better name for a subprogram. In this video we'll mainly look at procedures as a type of subprogram or subroutine. We'll also look at how this fits into computational thinking and thinking procedurally, which we have thought about before. And we'll also talk about reusable components. Subprograms are designed to be reusable. So the term reusable components needs some thought as well. So, subroutines. These are used everywhere in programming. They're sometimes used to tidy up code into different sections to keep things t uh, neat and tidy. But more often they're used to reuse code to be efficient and to allow for the easy maintenance of code and not to reinvent the wheel every time we want to do something. There are two types of subroutine. There's procedures and there are functions. If we want to define subroutines, we'd say subroutines are blocks of code containing instructions to be executed. Subroutines are given identifiers, and that is the name of a subroutine. The identifier is used to call, and when we say call, we mean execute the instructions within the subroutine, and it's called from the main code. First of all, we'll look at procedures. So what I've got here is a tiny little vb.net program with three text boxes and a button on there. And if I look at my code for the button, which is called CMD save, what's happening uh, in this code is that the three text boxes and the button are all becoming disabled, which is something you'd often want to do if you were performing a save operation that the buttons would disable. Let's just see that happen. Um, so that the user can't do things to data or try and save again whilst the save is in operation. That's why that happens. So those four bits of code there, we might want to disable those uh, controls at other times, not just when we click on the save button. So what I could do is go and cut that code and write myself a procedure and paste those four lines in there so it becomes more reusable. So I'd declare a procedure which is done like this in bb.net and I might call it disable controls. Hit enter and it gives me my end procedure syntax which in vb.net is end sub, and then I'm just going to paste in my four commands there. Then, when I want to call the identifier for the procedure, I just type disable controls there, and if we put a breakpoint on, we'll be able to see what happens here now. The form runs, click on save, the code stops here and what it's going to do if I F8 in this version of VB.net is it jumps down, um, it calls the procedure called disable controls and I just step through it there and then the code uh, returns to the main program up here. So it does the same job, but the beauty of it is I can reuse these four commands uh, just by calling disable controls at any time, which I may well want to do. I might have another button on my form which I need to do that, or another instance of um, it doesn't have to be a button, it could be when we lose focus from a text box or something. So we've made some reusable code there. So now we've seen a procedure working uh, here is a definition. The main program will call a procedure 
by using the procedure identifier in a line of code. When that line of code is executed, the main program pauses whilst control is passed to the procedure. When the procedure finishes, control returns to the main program and the rest of the main program is executed. So here's our main program, which as we saw from the vb.net example, um, the main program itself will probably be a procedure. If I just remind you of what I mean by that. The actual command save main program, as we can see, uses the same syntax as our procedure. So it's actually a procedure itself, but it calls another procedure. So that's what I'm going to show you in, the, in this example here. Um, procedure is called identifier1, which then calls identifier2. That it, uh, executes its instructions, and then the code will jump back up to here, where more instructions can be executed. Of course, all procedures need an end procedure, or in the case of vb.net, an end sub command to make sure that particular block of code is finished. Before we look at functions, another important part of subroutines is something called parameters. Now we're going to define parameters, then we're going to look at an example. Sometimes a procedure will need data passing into it so it knows what to do. When a procedure is defined, a special type of variable is declared which receives data from whereabouts the procedure is actually called from. This variable is defined in brackets after the identifier of the procedure is defined. This type of variable is called a parameter, also known as an argument. When the main program calls procedure, the required data is passed into the procedure and this is known as passing parameters. So here we've got our main program called identifier1. It is calling a procedure called identifier2 but then in brackets afterwards it's going to pass in some data whatever that may be. So control passes to the other procedure which receives the parameter from the first procedure and then uses it in its instructions to be executed. Then of course when this procedure ends control returns over to here and the main program continu can continue. So let's think about an example. If we look back at the procedure that disabled the controls on the form, well I'm going to make this a bit more sophisticated now by using parameters. I'm actually going to call the procedure something different. So identifier is going to be called enable or disable controls and I'm going to specify my parameter here and I'm going to call the parameter uh, B which is short for boolean um, enable or disable as boolean and boolean is either true or false it's a data type that allows true or false um, and then Every time uh, on the resulting lines, um, we're going to use that value of that parameter that's passed in. I'm just copying and pasting here um, to decide whether things should be enabled or disabled. When we call up the name of the um, procedure, the identifier, um, I've got to specify the parameter that I want. First of all, I'm going to say false. Enable or disable controls false. And that will disable everything. And then later on I want to might want to re-enable everything, in which case I'd put true. So let's see this work now. It's going to put the breakpoint on there and run it. Here it comes. So if when I click on save, the code stops here. I'm passing in false into my procedure, which is down here. So F8, and the code jumps into the procedure, and the procedure is receiving false. Therefore, txt name dot enabled equals false. So it should disable all of the items on the form. Let's go and see if we can see that. 
we maybe can't at the moment in runtime, or can we? No, we can't see that happening in runtime. But when control returns to the main program, um, this time I'm passing in true, so everything would become re enabled. So I've built a reasonably sophisticated sub procedure here that accepts a parameter and enables or dis uh, disables controls depending on what I pass in to it. Thinking about it, um, a better name for the procedure would have been just enable controls. So if I change that in all three places, I think that makes better reading because we're saying enable controls false, meaning we're disabling them. Enable controls true, meaning we are enabling them. So that's parameters. Key things to think about with regards to subprograms. So the things you're going to need to know for an exam. A subprogram is a set of program instructions which performs a specific task. It's not a complete program but must be incorporated into a main program in order for it to be used. Subprograms are called from a main program and there are two types procedures and functions. Thinking specifically about procedures, the key things you might need to know for an exam, as well as being able to code them, are that a procedure is a subprogram that is given an identifier or name in order to perform a task. A procedure can be called from a parent program as a statement and then returns control to the parent program when complete. Now this at the bottom right is taken from the exam board's pseudocode guide. So this is what some pseudocode for a procedure may look like, just here, uh, in an exam question. And then how it is called from a main program might look like the code here at the bottom. Subprograms and procedures in particular, with regards to computational thinking, are all about thinking procedurally. And we might need to think back to one of our previous videos where we looked at this. And we looked at things like system structure diagrams and stepwise refinement. And the identification, using a diagram like this one, of possible modules, or more accurately, sub-programs. We also need to think about that in terms of more complexity, where things uh, need to happen in a certain order. Procedures need to happen in a certain order. One of the beauties of any subprogram, including a procedure, is that it is reusable. So you might get asked about reusable components in an exam. We know that any um, procedure is reusable. For instance, our greeting procedure, which is coded up here, we could call as many times as we like, passing in a different name each time to print out some different output each time. It's very reusable. But reusability comes into computer science in lots of other ways as well. You'd need to know a bit about something called a DLL, a dynamic link library. And this is where subprograms are encapsulated within their own file in a Windows file system. So this might be our program that we could have built in VB.net or something similar. And it needs to use a subprogram which doesn't belong within itself. It might need to use a subprogram from an external file, a DLL, a dynamic link library. So subprograms can be separated and put in different files and shared between different Windows programs. So you could do some more reading on that. A development on that is something called the web service, where instead of the subprogram living in a locally hosted DLL, i.e. the DLL is installed on the local computer, your program can go over the internet and get a subprogram from somewhere on the web. Hope you enjoyed that video on subprograms and procedures. Next time we'll look at functions.